Welcome to a presentation for CO241 about the World Database. We've created databases uh, in the past by uploading a SQL file into phpMyAdmin. Well, this time we are going to create a database by typing in the name of the database, choosing the default collation, and then we'll go ahead and press Create. We create the database here by hand because the previous in SQL files had create database statement at the top of the file. Well, the current file for the world database does not have that create database statement. So we have to create the database first, then go to import, and then browse for the file, and then go ahead and upload the file. I have this file from our Blackboard uh, site. You just go ahead and download it from the assignment. Okay, so now the file was processed and a number of queries were executed to create the database. Let's briefly explore the database. First of all, we have three different tables. These uh, tables uh, have a uh, different uh, number of records. Obviously, the city table is the largest. We can see what columns these tables have, and the city table has a column called ID, which is an auto number, basically. It's a numerical representation of the row. And then the name of the city, followed by the three-character char country abbreviation, followed by the district and the population of the city. So if we were to preview this table, we can see the name of the city, the three character abbreviation, and then the name of the state, the district, and then the population of that specific city. Okay, next we have the country table. And in this country table, we have quite a few columns. The more important ones would be the code field which corresponds to the three character uh, field called country inside of the city table. Probably a better way to name this field would have been to call it country code and then have the same name in the city table and in the country table. That way it would be obvious that these two have matching or related information. But as is, we'll just remember that country, code, and city.country are the matching fields. And then uh, to preview the data, we can see we have name of the country, region, and then uh, many other um, pieces of information about the country. Finally, we have country language. And in this table, we have, again, the code of the country, the three-digit code, followed by the language of uh, the country. Then we can see whether this language is spoken officially. So is it uh, a legalized uh, official language in this country? Or is this an unofficial language? And then what percentage of the total population speaks this language? So let's run a few queries on these tables. I'll go to the SQL tab and I'll select, say something like select all from city. So this is going to show us all the cities in the city table. Okay, uh, phpMyAdmin will show the first uh, 30 rows. And now there's a total of uh, over 4,000 cities in our table. In order to uh, make the uh, issuing of SQL statements easier, I'm going to press this edit link and it's going to pop up a new window for me and I, I can now issue the SQL statements at the same time as you can see the results of these statements on your screen. Let's go ahead and try to find what city in our database has the least population. Now just a quick note about the data in the database. Uh, the data in our database is not um, current. It's maybe five, six years old. Uh, 
but that's that's not important. What's important is that uh, when we ask specific questions in terms of queries, we get the accurate information uh, as to what currently is in the database. Uh, other people typically would uh, make sure that the data is accurate. We have uh, maybe analysts or or um, or uh, business personnel who enter the data and make sure that the data is entered uh, properly. So we already are working with what is in the database. Um, and uh, let's start by saying select all from city and we'll go ahead and order this by population. We'll do that ascendingly. Please note that I do not have to be case sensitive because I am on a Windows system. This is a Windows XP. On a Windows XP system, uh, MySQL is not case sensitive. On a Unix system, uh, the table names have to be case sensitive. Uh, and that's because uh, table names in MySQL correspond to file names, and file names are case sensitive in Unix. So that's why I can, I can uh, use uh, upper or lower case uh, uh, letters, and that's not going to make that much difference. Let's go ahead and say OK. So now I can see all the cities in my database. They are ordered or sorted uh, per uh, the population. And the very first or the smallest city is Adamson in PCN with 42 um, uh, citizens or registered population. Well, what is this uh, country of PCN? Let's look it up. We are going to run a query now against the country table. So we'll say select all from country where the code of this country is PCN. So we remember that the country three character uh, code in this table called city is in fact named country. But inside of table called country, this data is called code. We'll say OK. And look at that. This PCN code refers to uh, Pitcairn, uh, Oceania. And so we see it's a dependent territory of the UK. Uh, and uh, we can see that, uh, in fact, this uh, territory uh, has about 67 uh, population, according to 2011 estimate. And uh, if we were to... Uh, uh, find more details uh, about that. Uh, a note here is made that uh, because of immigration um, new to New Zealand uh, there's about 50 people back in 2009. But other than that it's a beautiful place and uh, uh, definitely somewhere I'd like to be right about now. Alright, so PCN is the code of this particular country. Excellent. Well, let's run some other queries. Let's uh, go ahead and try to display all the countries which start with letter A. We would do that by specifying select all from country where the name of the country like so like is an operator that helps us to do string operations with wildcards so we can use a and then percent sign now again on windows mysql is not case sensitive but uh, even on unix when you do the like comparisons on mysql it is also not, not case sensitive so whether the country starts with capital a or lowercase a will be fine in other databases it will be important to run a function like upper against the name column and then make sure to use the uppercase. Sometimes it's it's a U case function, sometimes upper, um, sometimes it is string to upper, uh, different uh, databases will we'll use different, uh, uh, let me just see what MySQL uses. So MySQL does use uh, the upper. So for our needs, I'll go ahead and simplify this by uh, basically saying, go ahead and start with letter A. And of course, we see Afghanistan, Albania, all the different countries that start with letter A. Now, 
What if we just wanted to know how many? No, we don't want to see the countries, we just want to see how many. Well, PHP my admin helps us by saying, hey, I'm displaying the first 15, and there are 15 total. It's 15 because it goes from row 0 or index 0 to index 14. So instead, we could have said, go ahead and count all. And this would show us uh, a count function, and it would show us that, that 15 uh, countries start with letter A. Well, how about countries which in the name have letter A anywhere, not just at the beginning? Well, we can do that too, and there's 206 of them. All right, great. Let's, uh, let's take a look at um, another query. And uh, this time, let's uh, maybe uh, try to figure out how many, con how many countries... Let's see, let's uh, uh, briefly sample the data here. Okay, let's see how many countries we have with more than 20 million in population. Well, we would say select count the countries from country table, and then we would have to say where population is greater than, and then 20, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Uh, so this has to be um, seven zeros. Notice that I am not putting a quoted string, quote around 20 million because this is a number. So mathematical expressions would not require the string related quotes. Let's go ahead and run it. We have about 50 countries. To see the names of the countries, we get rid of the count function and we just go ahead and use all. And so now we can see different countries which um, different countries which have uh, 20 million population or more. Excellent. Well, those are queries on specific single tables. Let's see if we can run a query against multiple tables. Let's run a query uh, which will include the country language table and let's try to see how many uh, how many people actually speak the Dutch language okay how many people speak the Dutch language whether officially or unofficially so we don't care whether this is, uh, has a T or an F for uh, true is official or false is official We're, we just want to know how many people in the world total will speak Dutch to do that we are going to work with two tables, the country table and the um, country language table. First, let's just display the data. We'll say, first of all, country will become an A. That's our alias to, to the table. It makes our select statement a little bit shorter. I'll say a.name, comma, a dot population. So I, from the country table, I'd like to see the population of the country and the name of the country, followed by the language of the country, followed by the percentage. And of course, B refers to country language table. Okay, so that's country language table. All right. Now, if I just press enter right now, or press go, I would get a Cartesian join. Cartesian join basically would cause every row in the city table to be matched to every row in the country table. So it would be an undesirable effect. It, it, uh, it uh, takes quite a bit of resources from the database to do a join like that, and it's usually useless to us because it uh, mismatches the data. So we have to tie the country and country language tables together through a join. And we'll do that by saying where A or country, and we know that the country table has a field called code, 
and code will refer to the country column inside of the country language uh, table. And when we run it, we can see that in Afghanistan, there is certainly population that speaks the Pashto language. In the Netherlands, people speak Dutch and their percentages. So for our needs of uh, uh, just the Dutch language, we're going to say we're B that language equals Dutch. And we have an error here. Oh, I'm missing the operator end. So now I can see that uh, in Netherlands and in the uh, islands uh, and in Aruba and in Belgium, also in Canada, there is a, a percentage of people who speak um, Dutch. Okay, well, this information doesn't tell us though how many people are speaking Dutch. We have a, a percentage here and the total of population for that country. So we'll have to multiply, multiply the percentage by population to have the actual number of individuals. You can see though that percentage is represented not as a fraction but as a full number. So 100 is, is, is total. But uh, for our mathematical expression to be correct we have to divide this by a hundred so that 59 becomes actually uh, just a little bit more than half. So we'll divide that by a hundred and now our percentages are actually correct. So a hundred percent is actually one. So all we have to do now is, uh, and we can uh, go ahead and, and get, rid of, get rid of the language for now, all we have to do now is multiply population by that percentage. And when we run it, we actually get the number of individuals in that specific country who speak the language. Okay. Uh, notice here though, please, uh, and let me uh, go one query back. Okay. Notice though that uh, our percentage in this case is zero. Okay. This could have to do with the significant digits represented uh, in our database and if there, there are very few individuals speaking in uh, the Dutch uh, until uh, if there is a, a small percentage of people speaking the language then they wouldn't make it um, into the significant digits of our database. That's why uh, most likely it shows zero. Alright, so now let's get back to um, uh, let's see where my select statement ended up uh, disappearing to. There we go. So this is my uh, statement. Let's let me copy that in. Okay. So now we calculated the percentage. But we wanted to know, not per country, how many people speak Dutch. We wanted to know the total in the world. So to do that, we're going to get rid of the selection of the, um, of the name. And uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and issue it this way. Okay. So now we have just the numbers. Well, to know how many people in the world speak Dutch, we just have to add these numbers together. These numbers can be added by using the sum function. So now we will have the total of people who speak uh, Dutch. And that's about 21 million. All right. We could also develop a query here by with the help of the group function which would show us the uh, name of the language so we'll go ahead and add language here we'll add language and instead of selecting our own language we can say go ahead and group by language and this statement goes for 
uh, this statement shows for every language how many individuals actually speak the language and it groups so it groups the the totals of population perform, uh, multiplied by percentage it groups them per each of the languages so inside of let's say uh, uh, Afrikaans maybe there are multiple places that speak the language this was rolled up or grouped to show just one row and then this one row has this calculation of some performed on it that's what the group by uh, expression shows okay we could also add something like um, count all and when we do that we not only see the totals per language but we can actually see how many different countries contributed to this total so the group by expression is very useful and it helps us to create information see database stores data as pieces of uh, of uh, research um, those are pieces of uh, numbers or strings uh, that are as detailed as they can be and then through querying the database out of the data we create information produce reports uh, it, it is a um, humanly usable piece of data uh, that's been changed into information so hopefully this uh, uh, little presentation helped with uh, exploring the world database and to the types of queries that we can run in this database thank you